Good morning, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to the briefing today. Uh, today, we're going to be hearing from public health. We're going to be hearing from our emergency management folks uh, about the windstorm last night and then from our streets department. Um, and so without further ado, I will hand it over to Janelle Heinrich, who's our director of public health, Madison Dane County. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor. I'm here to provide an update on where things stand with COVID-19 in Dane County in terms of case numbers, vaccination, and what we know about the Omicron variant. I'll begin with that new information about the Omicron variant. Um, we knew it was just a matter of time, but earlier this morning we were notified that three cases of Omicron have been detected through sequencing of positive test results here in Dane County. Though, given the highly transmissible nature of Omicron, it's likely more. But I want to take a moment to reiterate that while Omicron deserves our attention, we should not panic. There remains a lot that we do not yet know about this variant, but early analysis suggests that Omicron appears to have similarities to the Delta variant in its ability to spread more easily than the original strain of COVID. However, we're still learning more about this new variant and are so grateful for the scientists who are working around the clock to find these answers. But here's what we do know. Vaccination provides our best protection against all strain of COVID, strains of COVID, including Omicron, and so far seems to greatly reduce the risk of severe illness and death. Booster doses are particularly important when it comes to Omicron because they reinforce our body's ability to recognize and fight COVID. For those who are fully vaccinated, please do not delay getting your booster dose as soon as you are able to. A reminder, you can get your booster dose two months after your initial dose of Johnson & Johnson or six months after your second dose of Pfizer or Moderna. Or, or Moderna. Booster doses and pediatric doses of COVID-19 vaccine are available at our clinic at the Alliant Energy Center, as well as our two office locations on South Park Street and East Washington Avenue. You can also choose to get vaccinated at one of the various local pharmacies or through your healthcare provider. You are the best person to talk to your loved ones about getting a vaccine if they haven't made that choice yet. If you need some advice about how to approach that conversation, you can find it on our website, www.publichealthmdc.com. It's important to note that even before the arrival of Omicron, we have been experiencing increases, um, increasing cases locally, statewide, and nationally. The currently dominant Delta variant remains able to spread fast, and that's what it's doing in the Midwest and northeast, Northeastern states right now. As of today, unfortunately, Wisconsin is currently seeing one of the highest case rates in the country. More than half of Wisconsin hospitals are currently operating at overall peak capacity, with more than 96% of the state's ICU beds currently in use, not just because of COVID, but let's be clear, COVID is an avid, added stressor at a time when our resources are already stretched. Vaccination with a full initial series plus a booster dose is our best course of action to help relieve our healthcare systems of this added stress. As we continue to monitor rising cases and hospitalizations, and while we wait to learn more about the Omicron variant, and as we are in the midst of this holiday season, please consider prioritizing your exposures, your risk. For example, if you plan to see your family, you may want to reconsider your activities to limit your exposure until then. And finally, please wear your mask indoors and keep washing your hands and practicing other good hygiene measures. This will help you keep healthy um, from other illnesses as well. We are all fatigued by the persistence of this virus. But as we have throughout the pandemic, this is another moment where we need to adjust and adapt to the ever-changing landscape of COVID-19. I'll close with a bit of encouraging news. 
and a moment of gratitude for the 48% of vaccinated residents in Dane County who have already stepped up to get their booster. I also want to point out that roughly half of five to 11 year olds in our community have received at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine. This is in just a little more than a month of the vaccine being able, eligible to this age group. I'm so incredibly proud and grateful to the residents of Dane County for stepping up to protect themselves and each other. Thank you. Thank you, Janelle. And, and that really is good news um, to hear those numbers, particularly that kiddos are getting vaccinated um, and that those of us who are already vaccinated are getting boosted. So let me just reiterate again, it's really, really important if you are not yet vaccinated, please do get vaccinated. If your kids are not yet vaccinated and they're eligible, please make sure that you get them the shot. And if you're eligible for the booster, now's the time. Don't wait. It's readily available across our community and it's something that all of us can do to keep ourselves and each other safe. Um, really appreciate everybody making a difference here. Um, as you know, COVID is not the only thing going on in our community. So we're going to hear next from Ed Ruckriegel, who's with our fire department and does emergency management for us about the windstorms last night. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. Um, given the weather forecast and the extreme uh, weather conditions we saw last night, the city did fairly well um, through the storm. There were a number of power outages. Last night, uh, I think at the peak, there were about 1,800 power outages. Fire department and other agencies responded to 15, 19, somewhere in there, incidents. Most of those were, uh, you know, wires down, uh, limbs down, electrical emergencies, and what have you. Um, this morning, as of about 9 o'clock, there were 460 MG&E customers without power. A good number of those were in Monona and Fitchburg. Um, but, you know, we're, the forecast is calling for sustained winds of 25 mile an hour and then gust of about 35 mile an hour for the next few hours. So it looks like, um, you know, we've come through this fairly well. Questions? Thanks, Ed. And I just want to thank everybody who was working last night. Um, I know that the MG&E crews were out dealing with the power outages. Obviously, our fire department... Uh, was out there making sure that people were safe and our streets crews um, and our forestry crews were out there as well and will be throughout the day uh, to clean things up. So I really want to appreciate everybody from the city in particular um, who was keeping us safe last night and uh, hopefully very few people still without power in Madison. Um, but if you are, uh, know that it's being worked on um, and that you should get your power back soon. I just want to pause and, and say that, you know, this was really, really unusual weather for Madison to see um, 60 degrees in December and then to have these massive windstorms. Um, something is obviously uh, changing about our weather and about our climate. And I think you really can draw the line right back to um, the global climate crisis. So while it's important for us to react in the moment to keep people safe, it's also important for us to take a look at the bigger picture and make sure that we're doing everything we can to reduce the emissions that cause climate change and impact our weather patterns like this. Um, now, speaking of our streets department, we're going to hear from our streets superintendent, Charlie Romines, um, to give us an update on fall and winter, even though it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it may not feel like winter is coming, but in the streets division, winter is always coming. Um, a real brief update, the, the forestry uh, work unit is part of the streets division. Um, last night, uh, crews came in and responded through mid-morning, a total of 16 trees down, uh, 14 limb calls blocking either sidewalks, bike paths, or uh, partial lanes. Um, as the mayor mentioned, uh, I, I do want to take just a second and give a shout out particularly uh, to the forestry crews. Anybody who was out in that last night, um, 40 to 60 mile an hour sustained winds for six or seven hours, pitch dark, it sounded like a train going through the trees uh, to grab chainsaws and head out in that to do tree work. 
um, I think takes a certain level of, uh, of courage. Um, so I just, I want to thank them uh, personally, you know, for, for taking care of that. Um, on the back side of that storm, we do expect there to be some level of uh, brush uh, that has been brought down. Um, based on where we're seeing tree calls, it looks like the city has been hit fairly evenly. So we do intend uh, starting tomorrow and given the favorable forecast next week uh, to go around and do another uh, round of brush collection. So I encourage uh, Madison residents, uh, if you have brush that you need to get out, get it out to the uh, right of way to the terrace as soon as you can. Uh, as long as we have favorable weather, our intention is to start tomorrow and next week to get that collected. Uh, next week, of course, is a short work week due to the Christmas holiday. Um, and so we're going to do something a little different. Uh, and this is uh, important for folks to note. Um, for the first time this winter, we have a small streets unit that is working overnights in the winter. Our intention next week is to use them to collect brush. So we will, uh, if you are in bed and out on the lawn, you hear such a clatter. It is not likely to be Santa and his tiny reindeer. It will be your friendly streets division staff loading, hand loading brush into a rear loader. Uh, we will not chip it. That will be kept for the daytime. But uh, uh, at 2 a.m., we may be out um, at the terrace hand loading uh, brush into the back of a truck. So our intention is to get around the city just as fast as we can and get it cleaned up nice before snow comes and it will come. Um, I want to give a couple of updates briefly. A uh, large item collection. So we've uh, made an enhancement to that starting this week. Um, we will have uh, the work orders are still uh, required. However, that work order is something a resident can put in weekly um, subject to space being available. Of course, next week and the following week are short work weeks, so that availability will be a little bit limited by that. Um, however, we suspect the vast, vast majority of the year, residents, when they put in that work order, will see dates uh, the next week, the following week. Um, so it should really speed up the large item collection process while allowing us to retain the efficiencies we've been able to build in by going to a work order system. I really just would like to emphasize uh, for our residents, please don't put your large items out before the set out date. Um, it just encourages things to get blown around or to encourage um, people to go around scrapping and things of that nature. So, so please wait until your set out date to put those items out. Um, Leaf collection is done for the year. Uh, if you have uh, leaf or other yard waste items that you need taken care of, you can absolutely take that to either the Sycamore or Badger Road drop-off sites. They do remain open during the winter, although on a, uh, a reduced schedule, you can go to cityofmadison.com forward slash yard waste to, to see that. Um, and as mentioned, winter is always coming in the streets division, cityofmadison.com forward slash winter. For a lot of really good updated information, you, you can also sign up for our snowplow updates as well as for snow emergency uh, alerts. I strongly encourage people to do that. Also on that site, there's a lot of good tips and information on how to salt properly. In the city of Madison, we sit on top of our drinking water supply and we're surrounded by beautiful lakes. Unfortunately, that's where the salt goes too. So it's really important not to use more, pardon me, use more than is absolutely needed uh, to make your sidewalk, driveway, uh, parking lots safe. Um, last thing, I'll put a shout out for our plow operators. Um, please, 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 the best thing you can do for the streets division in the winter is give your snow plow operators a wide berth. Um, we have no better traction than you do. Uh, we cannot stop any faster than you can. Um, but even just slight fender taps can take that plow out of commission for many, many hours um, in order to get all of the work done that needs to be done to put that plow back into operation. So please give them extra room and allows them to get the, the plowing done better uh, and more quickly for your, your traveling needs. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. And um, let me add uh, to that, that if you see our streets folks out there, whether it's um, you know plowing snow or picking up brush, uh, maybe not at 2 a.m., but other times a day, give them a wave, give them a thumbs up, give them a thank you. Um, they're working hard to keep our streets safe and as clean as possible. I certainly appreciate that work. Um, all right, we have some uh, a few things to go through today, mostly good news. 
Um, I want to start by just alerting folks that the State Department of Natural Resources has been seeking input on two standards related to PFAS compounds. Uh, one is the proposed drinking water standards, and the other uh, is the proposed surface water standards for PFAS. And as I hope you know, we do have a PFAS contamination problems here in Madison. And um, so I was pleased to be able to submit letters to the DNR in support of science-based and health-based standards. I hope the DNR will move these forward. It uh, will certainly support our community's efforts to uh, clean up PFAS in both our drinking water and our surface waters. Um, and you can find out more on my blog, cityofmadison.com slash mayor slash blog. Now to the good news. We have a bunch of awards. Uh, in, if you missed it, uh, we presented the Alex Olson Award for the promotion of tolerant, a tolerant and just community um, on December 7th at the last Common Council meeting. Uh, we presented two of these awards for 2020 and 2021, and the winners are Oscar Morales and the Tamara D. Grisby Office for Equity and Inclusion of Dane County. Um, I want to really congratulate and thank our winners for the great work that they do in our community, um, and thank Alex Olson, who the awards are named after, for her work and years and years of service to our community. Um, we also uh, can announce that Monona Terrace earned LEED Platinum Level Certification for existing buildings, which is a huge accomplishment uh, for an existing building to get platinum status. And it's a real testament to the work that the folks at Monona Terrace have done uh, to make it the greenest possible convention center uh, for Madison. And it's a real selling point, I think, for our, our community and for folks who want to book events there. Um, we also uh, got a Digital Cities Award uh, for 2021. Um, uh, we were recognized by the Center for Digital Government. Um, and we got this award for a number of different projects and initiatives, uh, including um, using uh, software on our rental assistance program, our virtual public meetings work, um, and uh, working on uh, governance and data policies for Results Madison, which is um, work that will go on for several years going forward here. We also, in, in 2021, received the What Works Cities Silver Certification, uh, which is exciting, um, and a number of other data-related initiatives that we got recognized for. Um, as usual, I will close by highlighting some community resources and some upcoming meetings. Um, particularly as we go into winter, if you are homeless or in danger of losing your housing, please call our housing helpline at 608-264-0549 or email housinginfo at cityofmadison.com. If you need help finding childcare, uh, you can call Community Coordinated Child Care at 608-216-7022 uh, for resources on both of those and more, including emergency food options um, and other information about social services in our community. Please call 211. That's the United Way. Um, you can either call 211 or you can text your zip code to 898-211, and they will help you get connected to resources in our community. That's what they do. Um, if you need access to the internet, um, to access resources in our community, um, you can make an appointment at one of our local libraries. They have uh, com uh, computers available for public use. So check your local library. All of these resources and more are posted at cityofmadison.com. Just click, click on the community resources link. You can also, again, visit uh, my blog and subscribe for more information. That's cityofmadison.com slash mayor slash blog. Upcoming meetings. It's a, a little bit of a list because um, we are going all the way through into, uh, until our next briefing, which is in January. Um, so today, uh, the 16th, we have the Landlord-Tenant Issues Committee at 5, also at 5, Police and Fire Commission, also at 5, the Police Civilian Oversight Board. On Monday, the 20th, at 5, the Transportation Policy and Planning Board, also at 5, the Police and Fire Commission. Uh, and if you haven't 
caught this yet. We are uh, in the unfortunate position of having to hire a new fire chief. Only unfortunate because Chief Davis has done such a great job and is retiring and leaving us. So the Police and Fire Commission is conducting the process to hire a new chief, and they are interested in what is important to you in a fire chief. Um, so you can certainly attend their meetings. You can also jump on their website um, and give them feedback through email or other means as well. And we look forward to uh, that process um, being robust and them finding us a great new chief. There's a big break between December 20th uh, before our next city meeting, uh, which happens on Monday the 3rd of January, and that's uh, the City County Homeless Issues Committee will meet. Um, and I don't have the time for that. On Tuesday the 4th at 4.30, the Common Council Executive Committee meets. And at 5, the Police and Fire Commission. And at 6.30, the Common Council. On Wednesday, January 5th at 4.30, the Board of Public Works. And at 5, the Board of Health for Madison-Dane County. On Thursday the 6th, the Public Library Board will meet. On Monday the 10th, the Finance Committee meets at 4.30 p.m. Um, and then the Police and Fire Commission will also meet at 5.30 on Monday the 10th. On Tuesday the 11th, Madison Arts Commission meets at 5.30. And Wednesday, January 12th, uh, we have the, a 5 o'clock Public Safety Review Committee and a 5.30 p.m. Education Committee. That is probably more than you want to think about, but as always, you can find information about all of these meetings online at the city's website, citymadison.com. The vast majority of our meetings are still taking place virtually, and so you can register um, to view the meeting, uh, or you can sign up to give public comment at those meetings as well. I will end by saying uh, happy holidays and happy new year to everyone. Please be safe, get vaccinated, get boosted, wear your masks, wash your hands, and enjoy your time with friends and family. Um, and we will see if we have any questions. We do have questions, two of them for Janelle. All right, Janelle. The first one, Janelle, is specifically about Omicron. Could you please provide more information on Omicron in Dane County? Was it just one case or multiple? Could you please provide demographic and vaccination status of the person or people where Omicron was detected? So as I said earlier, um, we were just notified by our partners at the University of Wisconsin lab that does the sequencing early this morning about the presence of uh, Omicron being detected in some samples um, that were out for testing. So there are three um, uh, positive Omicron um, cases that have been identified, but as this is just really groundbreaking news here in Dane County, I don't have much more data than that at this point in time. Okay, thank you. And then the second question for you is, will the current mask order be extended? So we always, um, it's a little early uh, to, to tell, but I think what we've demonstrated is that we know that masks are an effective layer of prevention. And as we are um, having Omicron be detected, our case activity is quite high. Our hospitals are quite full. We're going to continue to ask folks for now to keep wearing your mask, um, but have not uh, made any final decisions there. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you. Thanks, Janelle. I just want to reemphasize um, Janelle's point that um, our strategy towards COVID really needs to be multi-layered, whether we're looking at that on a population basis, those throughout the city of Madison uh, or Dane County or on an individual basis. And so think about layers of protection. One layer of protection is getting vaccinated. Another layer of protection is getting boosted. Another layer of protection is wearing a mask. Another layer of protection is washing your hands. Another layer of protection is keeping your distance from folks or interacting f with folks more outdoors than you do indoors. You choose your level of risk and your layers of protection uh, but please do so in a way that takes into account not just your own risk, but also the risk of those around you, your family, your friends, your coworkers, and your entire community. There's lots of tools available to us, and we all need to use them. 
Uh, and we all need to get used to continuing to use them uh, regardless, because this virus is not going anywhere. Uh, we're going to be living with it for the rest of our lives. So we need to really be able to, to make those risk decisions and to use those tools um, on an ongoing basis um, and to do so, again, in a way that, that thinks about our whole community and keeping folks safe. So again, thanks, everybody. Happy New Year, and uh, we will see you in January.